Alright, so uh, it's been a while since I made any videos, but I um, wanted to uh, do sort of like an overview of the next series of videos that I was going, that I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to try to release these uh, instead of sort of all at once, sort of one at a time. Um, I've gone through this already, um, but basically I want to go over sort of the boot process on a... Uh, traditional BIOS booting machine, booting off of a hard drive, um, and just booting like into the OpenBSD kernel. Um, <clears throat> I started to play around, the reason why like maybe there's such a long gap between my last set of videos is I started to play around with like, uh, I don't know, uh, looking at keyboard drivers and that kind of stuff. And uh, I decided I wanted to understand sort of more about how OpenBSD handles memory, uh, especially sort of the low level um, AMD64 architecture, memory handling, uh, like, you know, page tables, that kind of stuff, um, which hopefully I'll get into at some point in the future. Um, but uh, if you don't, you know, anyway, that's sort of background. Uh, if you don't know anything about how uh, a machine boots, um, essentially, like, when you power on the machine, uh, the first instruction, according to Intel documentation, is at a certain address, and that certain address is always wired to your machine's uh, BIOS firmware that's in read-only memory. Uh, what that does is kind of a black box, although there is like somewhat of an interface to it. Um, you know, BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, so it provides facilities for you know an operating system to get up and running um, without necessarily having um, you know figured out the layout of memory and all that stuff yet. Um, so, like, there's sort of three programs, and calling them programs is, like, all of them programs anyway is maybe a little bit of a stretch, um, but, uh, three, I don't know, phases maybe to the boot process. Uh, the first, um, is handled by this file, mbr.s. Um, and essentially this code lives on the first sector, uh, sector of the hard drive that you've chosen to boot. Um, so whatever hard drive that is, um, the machine or the BIOS is going to load, uh, read in the code that's generated from this assembly file, um, load it at uh, like this address in your memory and that's it like from that point on uh, you're in control so to speak um, 512 bytes is not a lot and also some of that is like the boot partition or the like partition table um, you know uh, what is this each uh, partition table is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, and then another eight, 16 bytes long, um, and then there's two more bytes at the end. Um, so you can actually see that uh, DOS part off um, is you know the 446th byte. Um, where that partition table starts, which at least theoretically gives you four partitions. You know, some of those partitions can be quote unquote extended partitions, which allow allows you to have more partitions. This is overview. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not even going to get into it in the like, you know, more in depth videos, but like that's, you know, it has information on the partitions that are on the hard drive one of which is supposed to be the bootable partition. The job of um, mbr.s 
is to find that bootable partition and so at least the way that OpenBSD does it is um, the first sector of that bootable partition contains code contains more code so this is going to find the first sector of that bootable partition um, load it into memory and run it this biosboot.s is the code that is stored on that first bootable partition so like this also has to be less than 512 bytes uh, or 512 bytes or less because this one doesn't have to deal with a partition table um, of code and needed data um, once it's all assembled so that's what this is like you know you can see these files I mean they aren't that long um, and there's a lot of comments because like I mean okay 883 lines maybe not super short but like you know there's a lot of comments there's a lot of space it's in assembly um, like <clears throat> it's you know it's pretty short um, all things considered um, <laughs> and uh, like this the job of this is to load the actual boot program um, which when you boot up OpenBSD you know it gives you a little like com quote unquote command line which you know it's not really I mean it is a command line but it's not like a it has very few features you can basically just say like hey I want to boot you can basically just tell that program which kernel you want to boot if you've got like multiple kernels stored on your hard drive and like if you're doing kernel development you would and you compiled a kernel and it broke something and so you want to you know boot a safe kernel after that um you know that's basically it right like the the job of this uh mbr.s is to load this bios boot.s assembly program into memory the bios boot.s its job is to load the actual boot program into memory um the boot program uh lives in uh boot.c um but before um boot.c actually gets run so um right so you can see this is boot uh this gets run you know this is what this is trying to run but before this gets run actually um, there's a small intermediate file that gets run um, called srt.s um, and I believe yeah so there's a couple different versions of them depending on how you're going to boot um, but um, oops yeah so srt 0s this is like a little assembly program you can see it's not very long um, that uh, sort of like it gets you out of real address mode which is what the processor starts in and what mbr.s and biosboot.s run in uh, gets you out of um, real address mode gets you into uh, protected mode which is what the boot.c program expects to run in um, and just sort of does some like magic linking sort of stuff um, it sets up like a global descriptor table stuff like that which if you don't know what the global descriptor table is 
Uh, hopefully I'll get into that in more detail. Um, there's kind of a lot of different moving parts here at Boot Up, um, but that's what kind of makes it so interesting because it's a chance, for me anyway, uh, makes it interesting for me is that it's a chance to learn a lot of different things. Um, so, you know, like, yeah, you can see like right at the very, like just before um, you call the boot, you know, program, which is this, you call PMM init, which is protected mode memory, I assume is what that's supposed to stand for. Um, yeah, um, sets up a bunch of stuff that's, you know, or sets up some really like low level important stuff uh, that I find really interesting um, and is relevant to like, you know, discussions about memory. So <laughs> um, that's sort of what we're gonna be getting into. Uh, hopefully like the next video I'll be able to cover um, both mbr.s and biosboot.s um, in one video. Um, it might take longer than that because I'll have to get into file systems a little bit during biosboot.s. Um, but, you know, see how it goes. Um, in the meantime, the only other thing that I wanted to look at um, is this little program that I wrote, um, which, you know, feel free to uh, copy and use for yourself because as far as I know, there is no such program, um, at least natively on OpenBSD. It's not very like, you know, it's very short, but it's also very useful when you wanna just sort of figure out kind of what your particular CPU's capabilities are. Um, so what this program is supposed to do is execute the machine level instruction CPU ID. Um, so CPU ID is a machine level instruction um, that uh, you can, depending on what values you put into uh, the registers EAX and sometimes ECX, um, gives you certain information about your particular CPU, which you can then use to like do different things on your machine. Um, however, like writing assembly is like, it's kind of hard to get it all linked up. Like the basic tenets of assembly aren't so difficult, but uh, getting your operating system and like linker uh, to link everything correctly and your operating system to load it all correctly so that you don't get segmentation faults and all that kind of stuff can be kind of difficult. So um, any like GCC and CLang um, or Clang, I guess some people call it, um, you know, most C compilers have a way for you to put assembly code into your C programs um, which is what this is, this little statement, uh, so that you can, you know, run small snip snippets of assembly um, and have them have like the compiler handle linking everything together for you. Um, so like basically what this is doing is it's a program that expects you to give zero one or two um, arguments to it. Um, if you give one argument, um, then that's what's going to be stored in the EAX variable, um, which is a C variable. I know I said EAX is a, you know, register, but you know, um, if you're following this all, if you're made it this far, then <laughs> You probably know those distinctions well enough, um, but I've just named it because that's going to store uh, the value that's going to be put in the EAX register when we run the CPU ID um, uh, assembly instruction. Um, so, yeah, if you put, if you give it one argument, that's the EAX argument. If you give it two, 
The first is the EAX, the second is the ECX. Um, and the way that this like instruction, this uh, ASM instruction works, or ASM function, it's a built-in function for GCC and Clang, um, is like the first argument is a string, um, which is your assembly code. Um, and I don't have any here because I don't need to, but uh, if you want to like reference arguments um, over here, you do like a percent sign, and then like, you know, if you wanted to reference this argument, you would do a zero, this argument would be one, two, three, four, five, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these um, things in quotes, so, okay, this is the first part, is your assembly code. After that is a colon, and then a string that represents restrictions. So um, right here I have A, which means I want this to be stored in the EAX register. Um, you don't have to be that specific. You can say, hey, store it in just any old register, whatever is most convenient for the compiler at the time, or store it in a memory location. Um, but what the you know everything after this first colon and before the next colon are output variables and the compiler essentially guarantees that whatever is in like this um, location which might be a register might be a memory location you know a specific one of any of those um, is going to like EAX is going to get its value, the C variable EAX is going to get its value from whatever this string specifies um, after all of this assembly is run. After this colon is the input, you know, variables. And, um, you know, what this says is that before any of this assembly is run, um, this memory location or this not mem not necessarily memory location but location register or memory or whatever um, is going to have whatever EA whatever value EAX has in it upon entry to this ASM statement um, upon whatever value EAX has on entry to this ASM statement is going to have this value in it at like before you start running this CPU ID function. Um, essentially, um, you know, it can get pretty complicated, but this, you know, this says that, like, you know, EAX is going to be in the same, this zero says that EAX is going to be in the same location that, like, this, is, this zeroth, output location is and this ECX is going to be in so this 0 1 2 this second argument this ECX value is going to be in this location before anything starts um, which is use not super useful when you have like you're specifying particular registers but if you're saying just put it in any old register um, like the compiler doesn't guarantee that like if I say hey put this in some register that like this is going to pull from the same register that this was put into um, maybe I should do a whole separate video on this but essentially this is saying like EAX is going to be the value in EAX the C variable is going to be in the EAX register before the CPU ID is fun ASM assembly instruction is run. ECX C variable is going to be in the ECX register before the CPU ID function is run. And then we're going to pull EAX from the EAX register, EBX from the EBX register, etc, etc, when the CPU ID function is finished. And then we're going to print it out, and then we're going to exit zero. Uh, like, pretty simple stuff. Um, like when you explain it like that 
Um, <laughs> Learning how to do this by just reading a manual page is probably, or reading the like GCC info documentation is a little bit more complicated. But uh, yeah, maybe this will give you uh, a primer um, if you do want to, you know, write some assembly uh, snippets in your C code. So. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. You know, like it might be useful because I do wait a long time between like putting out videos. If you want to get reminded or notified when I put out a video, sure, subscribe. Uh, if you liked it, great. That's it. Thanks. Have a good one. Peace.